This video was brought to you by Brilliant. We're now pretty deep into the Conservative leadership race, with the field whittled down to two and a number of debates now in the rearview mirror. Therefore, we'd assumed that by this point, the candidates would have a clear vision and plan for the future. So last week, we released two videos explaining Sunak and Truss's policies. However, it seems that with Sunak behind in the polls and very little time left before the Conservative membership begin casting their ballots, Rishi is making some fairly drastic last-minute campaign changes. In fact, over the weekend, Sunak announced some major shifts on a variety of issues, trying to make his tax plan more appealing and also shifting right on LGBTQ plus issues. So in this video, we're going to run through the changes that Sunak's making and why he's getting increasingly desperate. Now, as we mentioned at the top, Sunak has been slipping quite significantly in the polls. According to Politico's Poll of Polls, itself based on YouGov polling, 51% of Tory voters back Liz Truss, with just 37% backing Rishi Sunak. A separate poll of Conservative councillors does put the two candidates fairly neck and neck, with 31% for Truss and 29% for Sunak. The problem being that Conservative councillors aren't representative of the wider membership and tend to skew closer to the opinions of MPs who backed Rishi over members who are confidently backing Truss. The thing is that it's not just the polls that Sunak has slipped behind in. He's actually also behind in relation to the number of MPs that back him. That's because a lot of pretty high-ranking Tory MPs have fallen in line behind Truss, with four big names doing so over the weekend. The current Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, the current Chancellor, Nadeem Zahawi, the former Northern Ireland Secretary, Brandon Lewis, and former leadership contender, Tom Tugendhat. And this is an indicator of how badly things are going for Sunak. Because, well, if you're a Tory MP right now and you want a cabinet job in the next government, you're going to want to be on the winning side. And it seems like they think Truss is going to be that winner. So in a bid to recapture the narrative and turn the tables, it seems that Rishi has thrown a lot of so-called red meat to Tory voters, specifically in the form of playing into the culture war narrative and taxation. Let's start with culture wars. Late on Friday evening, the media were briefed ahead of an address that Rishi was set to make to supporters in West Sussex. An address that was going to get some major backlash. And believe us, we know how controversial it was just from our Twitter replies. Anyway, in the announcement, Rishi committed to three major policy points. Reviewing the Equality Act, strengthening guidance on relationship and sex education in schools, and amending the public sector equality duty to ensure that public sector organisations are opening and welcoming to people with differing opinions. Now, the actual substance of this policy reform is a bit technical, but it's how he's justified these changes which has led to most of the backlash. And that's because Rishi said that his government would, and this is a big quote, so bear with us, safeguard our shared cultural, historical, and philosophical heritage. Because what's the point in stopping the bulldozers in the green belt if we're going to allow left-wing agitators to take a bulldozer to our history, our traditions, and our fundamental values? Whether it's pulling down statues of historical figures, replacing the school curriculum with anti-British propaganda, or rewriting the English language so we can't even use words like man, woman, or mother without being told we're offending someone. And Rishi actually went even further, arguing that existing legislation is used to engage in social engineering to which no one has given consent. The worst offender in this regard is the 2010 Equality Act. It was a Trojan horse that has allowed for every kind of woke nonsense to permeate public life. Now, for those of you who are unaware, the Equality Act was one of the last legislative achievements of Gordon Brown's Labour government, and saw a number of anti-discrimination laws consolidated and beefed up. 
Under the Equality Act, discrimination on the likes of age, disability, gender reassignment, marriage, pregnancy, race, religion, sex, and sexual orientation were all banned. Now, most people don't want discrimination in these areas. And in substance, Rishi wouldn't change all of that. Instead, he would amend the Equality Act to, quote, make sure mothers and women are not erased from public life, make sure women's sports and services are protected, and clarify that self-ID does not have legal force, making clear that sex means biological sex. Now, on the school's point, Rishi argues that organisations like Stonewall have been able to present contentious issues as facts to schoolchildren, who are in the most vital developmental stages of their lives, something that he wants to prevent and change. And finally, on the public sector equality duty, Sunak wants to clarify that respect for protected characteristics of religion or belief requires tolerance for differing political opinions and religious and philosophical worldviews, not just those of the mainstream liberal elite. And from these announcements, you can see not only a tonal shift in how Sunak approaches the culture war debate, becoming a lot more right-wing in his attitudes, but you can also see why they upset and annoyed a lot of people. And that's not where Sunak's policy changes end either. On the matter of taxation, Sunak has been consistent throughout his campaign that now isn't the time for tax cuts, and that instead, the number one priority is tackling inflation. However, in a new announcement termed his radical tax vision, Sunak committed to cutting the basic rate of income tax from the current 20% to 16% by the end of the next parliament, i.e. 2028 with this 20% cut being the largest in 30 years. According to his campaign, these cuts will be funded through economic growth forecast by the Independent Office for Budgetary Responsibility. However, Liz Truss's campaign were quick to hit back on what they called Sunak's latest U-turn, arguing that people are facing the biggest cost of living crisis in decades and we cannot afford to wait to help families. They need support now going on to say that Liz will cut taxes in seven weeks, not seven years. Across the board then, it seems that Sunak is trying to appeal to the right of the party, and trying to erode support away from Truss. The problem for Sunak though, is that at least for now, he's being reactive, not necessarily proactive, and is, for better or worse, contesting the leadership election on Truss's terms, on tax, on the culture war, on topics she likes. And with ballot papers set to drop through Tory members' letterboxes any day now, it's a race against time for Sunak to define and win the race, a race that he's currently losing. Regardless, seeing Sunak's kind of erratic new policy making plays into the idea that decisions made by countries and leaders are at random and without any real purpose. However, if you'd like to be more logical in your decision making, then you should check out my favourite course on Brilliant. Their logical thinking course might start simple, but it builds, teaching you logical reasoning skills until you're solving problems which previously looked impossible. And you'll get used to that empowering feeling of learning, because Brilliant's not just about memorization and lectures. Brilliant teaches you by doing, using active learning techniques to teach you the principles behind otherwise complex subjects, and ensuring that you actually understand what's going on. Using this teaching methodology, you can learn about all kinds of STEM topics. That's algebra, applied probability, calculus, gravitational physics, and even cryptocurrency. In fact, they even have a new course from Kurzgesagt, which I have to say, I found very personally exciting and spent a lot of time playing with. Anyway, if you want to learn in a more fun way, then you should sign up to Brilliant. And the link in the description will get you 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is not only a great deal, but also supports the channel. So thank you.